might have the Senate assembled here before me in this way. <laughs> before the day's over, if you'd like to pass the budget, <laughs> amendment to balance the budget, a few things like that, I'll be deeply grateful. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to welcome you all here, and I know a little something about how this all comes about, and I congratulate all of you having been selected to represent all the 50 states in the District of Columbia and our overseas education. And if I could say one thing that I'd like to remind you that I hope you will remember as the time goes on and as you get a little closer to where you're going to take over from us, I hope I'm talking loud enough. I, once in a while I forget that I haven't got a microphone in front of me. I hope you'll remember these adults that are with you here and that have made this possible, the representative of the William Randolph Hearst Foundation, the trustees. I know something about how they've made all this possible, but also have uh, individual scholarships that have made it easier and possible for you to do this. And so when you get there where it's your turn to take over, remember this and remember that that is really the heritage of this country, volunteerism. I sat in this house at a dinner not too long ago and the wife of an ambassador from another country was my dinner partner on one side of me. And I was talking about something that was being done like this. Voluntary, private initiative, support of worthwhile causes and so forth. And she, bless her, said, yes, but you're unique. And I said, what do you, what do you mean, what, unique? She said, yes, in your country, that happens, and you do that. But she said, not in any other countries that I know of in the world. Everything there is supposed to be done with the government. <coughs> Instead of people privately seeing something that needs to be done and is worthwhile, and then pitching in to do it. Last year, people like these trustees who have you here in America gave to private charities and education and arts scientific research and all that sort of thing. $74 billion that was voluntarily donated for good causes. So when it gets to be your turn, remember that because there will be a bunch of young people just like you coming up waiting for someone to do things like that for them. And uh, I know that you're worthy of it or you wouldn't be here. So now I know I can get to work. <laughs> When I first came here, there was a newspaper out in the Midwest, the Des Moines Register, that ran a kind of a thing where they asked children, younger children, to submit uh, their ideas of what the president should do. And uh, I read those letters that came into that paper. And they were just wonderful. They were, sort of, I think, a little younger than you were, you were 11. But they had a pretty good grasp on uh, what some of the problems were some good advice on what I should do to solve it. But the one that I love best of all was a nine-year-old girl who wound up her leg with this line. She said, now, get over to the Oval Office and go to work. God <laughs> 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 bless you and thank you for being here tonight. Well, let me add one more thing here about living in this historical place. Uh, I've referred to a joking sometimes as public housing. <laughs> but. Uh, there is something to it. Uh, there are ghosts here. You can't help but be conscious of all who've lived here before. And there, most of these rooms are retained as they were then. The wonderful antique furniture and so forth, again, is a part of volunteerism, was contributed. Because in the early days, the first presidents to this in this country had to furnish this house, all 132 rooms themselves. And so one of the great ceremonies at the end of every president's term then was when he held an auction to sell off the furniture so he had enough money to go home. <laughs> but, uh, all of this, uh, saying there, there are wonderful little stories and anecdotes that you treasure. Teddy Roosevelt, in the beginning, this, there were no office wings on either side. This was it. This was not only the home, but this is where the cabinet came, and this is where the presidential staff and all did their work. Until one time, Teddy Roosevelt and his wife, they had six children. One day, Mrs. Roosevelt said to President Teddy, if I'm going to raise six kids in this house, you're going to get these people out of here. 
and so it has become a residence and no longer uh, a part of the residential or the administrative headquarters. But uh, again, thank you all for being here and have a good time while you're here. And, uh, as I say, if you get a chance to talk to a senator or anything, tell him what you as a senator feel about balancing the budget, <laughs> <laughs> tax reform, and so forth. Thank you all.